So as usual, there is a lot going on in the uh, field of artificial intelligence. We also have some news today in quantum computing because it seems like these two fields are rapidly, <laughs> rapidly congealing. But we're going to begin here with this article is titled Adobe Drops 2 Game Changing AI Tools for 3D Artists. It says generative AI continues to advance at a rapid pace with text to image generators now able to handle text and video to an extent. One of the next frontiers is 3D. And Adobe has just announced a potentially game-changing move with the first edition of tools driven by Firefly AI in Adobe Substance 3D, its suite of 3D programs. Firefly, Adobe's own suite of generative AI tools, is already powering next to image, oh, text to image, my apologies, features in the likes of Photoshop and Illustrator. Now it's coming to Substance 3D Sampler and Stager in a move that Adobe says will boost efficiency and creativity in 3D workflows for industrial designers, game developers, VFX professionals, and other content creators. Then they have this section here. It says, what's included? Adobe Substance 3D is a suite of programs used to create 3D digital content. It includes Substance 3D Painter, Designer, Modeler, Sampler, and Stager, and Stager apps, and offers a range of 3D materials a month that can be used to make 3D objects look realistic and lifelike. All right, so let's move on to this next article here. Adobe continues to search forward with its AI efforts. Now, this is this is where AI gets really interesting. Is it? I think into AI is most interesting outside of generative images in video. Right. So now, this article was titled "The Era of of the AI Home Broker Approaches." Let's find out what's going on here. It says, with the breakup of the NAR cartel, the biggest potential disruption in the real estate industry is if buyers, brokers are replaced by AI bots. The big picture, a well-trained AI would probably provide a better, more reliable service than most human brokers at a tiny fraction of the cost. Where it stands, the U.S. has what Business Insider has described as, quote, a glut of mediocre realtors, unquote, who are, quote, messing over home buyers. I'm, I'm paraphrasing one of those words. I don't want to say any bad words on YouTube because they don't like that. But messing over home buyers, unquote, it says as many as 2.8 million Americans are licensed as brokers. And even the National Association of Realtors said in 2015 report that, quote, the real estate industry is saddled with a large number of part time, untrained, unethical and slash or incompetent agents, unquote. Hey, if you know some realtors, you better let them know things might be changing soon and get ready. It says, what's next? An AI trained on the actions of very good brokers would be able to forward new listings to clients within seconds of them appearing. Would be up to speed on the plethora of documents and payments that need to be brought to a closing and could answer questions in an approachable conversational style 24 hours a day. While a robot couldn't go on home visits, it could certainly recommend local surveyors and home and other home inspectors. The bottom line. While buyers agents do provide some value to buyers, it's never been clear that the value to the buyer is remotely com commensurate with the amount they are paid. If a robot can provide 80% of the value at 1% of the price, that's a bargain many Americans might find very attractive. Wow. Like I said, things are getting interesting rapidly. The world is changing right before people's eyes, and I'm not quite sure that everyone sees it. But let's move on here to some more news here. Now we're getting into the quantum news if this article will ever pop up. Um, but <laughs> this article is titled, I want to thank everybody for being here. This article is titled quantum resonators break the thermal rule. And it goes as such when measuring minor changes for quantities like forces, magnetic fields, masses of small particles, or even gravitational waves, Physicists use micro mechanical resonators, which act like tuning force resonating at specific frequencies. Traditionally, it was assumed that the temperature across these devices was uniform. However, new research from the JILA fellow and University of Colorado Boulder physics professor Cindy Regal and her team, Dr. David, uh, Dr. Ravid Shaniv, 
and graduate student Chris Reitz has found that in specific scenarios, such as advanced uh, studies looking at the interactions between light and mechanical objects, the temperature might differ in various resonator parts, which leads to unexpected behaviors. Their observations published in the Physical Review Research can potentially revolutionize the design of micromechanical resonators for quantum technology and, pre and precision sensing. Wow. It says, quote, in quantum science experiments, understanding the, this temperature differences ramifications will allow you to generate your mechanical quantum state with better fidelity and keep it unperturbed for longer. It says both essential start starting points for quantum applications, unquote, elaborated the GILA postdoctoral research associate and first author Ravi Shaniv. This is the modes of minute measurers due to, to their flexible design. Micro mechanical resonators are a standard tool in many different fields of physics. These devices are often made of silicone or similar materials that can make take various shapes, beams, cantilevers, membranes or discs. Their small size allows them to oscillate at, freq at uh, higher frequencies, often in megahertz range to gigahertz. All right. So I, I wanted to start off with that article there because things are getting rapidly interesting when it comes to uh, quantum resonators, quantum computing overall, especially in correlation with artificial intelligence. And I believe we have another one here. Yes. So this one is about quantum computing here. And this article is titled. Quantum computing in a magnetic field, new ion trap for more qubits. It says, let me let me actually enlarge this. Bear with me one moment, please. One moment. Take that up to 125 on the zoom. Make it big. Easier to read. It says quantum computing in a magnetic field, new ion trap for more qubits with a view of, uh, a view to compactness and expandability a new method for controlling ions should enable larger and more efficient quantum computers in addition and you know open ai we covered the article in the last video about open ai going possibly going quantum so this could affect artificial intelligence greatly it says in addition it has been possible to achieve full mobility and control of the spin of a beryllium ion in a limited area a research group at, at ETH Zurich has taken on the limits of current quantum computers. One of the biggest challenges is the expansion to, to well over 100 qubits. Only some models with a, a few hundred qubits are actually in use at present. There are also setups with well over a thousand qubits. For example, the Julich Research Center in Germany, but they have not yet been able to really show what they can do. To counter this, these uh, researchers have chosen a method that is as stable as possible and can be constructed with comparatively little effort. An ion trap with radio radiation can maintain stable quantum states and is therefore considered promising. However, space is required for each of these traps, which ultimately represents a qubit. The source of the radio radiation requires a lot of energy. Interference between, to, between the circuits and the need for special materials also drive up cost, increase energy consumption, and reduce efficiency. This is to be countered by an ion trap that uses a magnetic field with a strength of a three Tesla with a strength of three Tesla instead of radio radiation. This value is uh, the, in the range of a typical magnetic resonance tomograph, i.e., quite high. Despite this, the trap constructed in this way should be extremely compact. The next step is to combine combine several similar structures into a more complex circuit. All right. So now let's end off here. We have one last quantum computing article. There's a lot going on today, folks. So now this article is titled Quantum Computing Breakthrough Photons that make quantum bits fly. Let's scroll down here and find out what they're talking about. Two. I put one finger up, sorry, but <laughs> two, two physicists at the University of Constanz are developing a method that could enable the stable exchange of information in quantum computers in the leading role photons that make quantum bits, quote, fly, unquote. Quantum computers are considered the next big evolutionary step in, in information technology. They are expected to solve computing problems that today's computers simply cannot solve or would take ages to do so. Research groups around the world are working on making the quantum computer a reality. 
This is anything but easy because the components of such a computer, the quantum bits or qubits, are extremely fragile. One type of qubit consists of the int intrinsic angular momentum spin of a single electron, i.e. they are at the scale of an atom. It is hard enough to keep such a fragile system intact. It is even more difficult to interconnect two or more of these qubits. So how can a stable exchange of information between qubits be achieved? Then it says this next section, flying qubits. The two Constance physicists, Benedict uh, Tissot and Guido Burkhardt, have now developed a theoretical model of how the information exchange between qubits could succeed by using photons as a, quote, means of transport, unquote, for quantum information. I love individuals like this coming up with these types of solutions. It says the general idea, the information content of the material qubit is converted into a, quote, flying qubit, unquote, namely a photon. Photons are, quote, light quanta, unquote, that constitute the basic building blocks making up the electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation field. The special feature of the new model, stimulated Raman emissions, are used for converting the qubit into a photon. This procedure allows for more control over the photons. Quote, we are proposing a paradigm shift from optimizing the control during the generation of the photon to directly optimizing the temporal shape of the light pulse in the flying qubit, unquote, explains Guido Burkhardt. Okay, listen, we're going to leave off there. It is so amazing um, how far everything is going that they're working with light. Light is transferring information now. I read an article a few days ago where, you know, um, there's another company also working on sending information, just light based. Light based information is unbelievable. Um, the world is changing as we know it, and um, hopefully it's going to be a very uh, interesting adventurous and beautiful future so <laughs> now that you have that information everybody what are you going to do with it and until next time take care